Great stuff. Uh, thank you very much for everybody for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to start off by wishing everybody a belated Ramadan Kareem and um, all the best during this holy period. Um, I have the honor and really appreciate the fact that Dr. Mazen Al Zaidi is joining us today from uh, now Misa, formerly Sagia, uh, who leads uh, and is the director of innovation entrepreneurship for much of the activity that's happening in the kingdom. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for a few years now, and it's truly been fascinating to see the activity that's taking place in Saudi, um, the, the focus and the vision of entrepreneurship, the position that Saudi Arabia plays in the wider startup ecosystem. And a lot of that is activated by Dr. Mazen and the, the MISA Institute of being able to allow not only startups to come in, but help support startups that are in Saudi kind of scale out. Um, to put things into context, last year alone, there was about 1,131 licenses issued for companies looking to operate in Saudi Arabia. Um, and we continue to see a huge amount of investment in Saudi-based startups. I mean, two, three years ago, I don't think that there was too much focus on venture capital as, a, as an asset class in the kingdom. And last year, from our 2019 report, um, there was 67 million invested in Saudi-based startups and across 69 different deals. And yet this year, despite the current environment, despite the current crisis, we've already seen um, $34 million of investment in about 14 deals. And we'll be working with SVC as we did last year to, to produce our H1 report um, to see how the effect has um, kind of led uh, in the current environment to investment uh, and, and the focus there. And what's interesting as a side note is that Saudi Arabian investors are the largest MENA-based uh, investor set that invests in MENA-based companies. So while they also invest in Saudi Arabia, they are also big investors in the region. So before I um, connect with Dr. Mazen, today the point of the conversation is to really help um, support you, how to guide to setting up in Saudi Arabia. What does that mean? What are the tools for you to be able to do that? And what are some of the things to be aware of as you're looking to potentially scale into the kingdom in this current state? So firstly, thank you very much, Dr. Mazen, uh, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, for, uh, for having me and uh, Ramadan Kareem to everyone. Thank you. So somebody has immediately put in the chat, and I think I wanted to start with a very simple question. What is MISA now? What does it stand for? And how is the mandate different to the then Sagia previously? Great. So uh, MIS is the Ministry of Investment, um, and we. So previously, it was it was it was Sagia, uh, the Saudi uh, uh, the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority. Um, it's it's still within the, the same mandate, um, uh, and it will be will be expanding. Uh, hopefully, uh, we focus on investment attraction and development, attracting investment in, into the kingdom. Trying to also we work on. Um, developing investment opportunities with with uh, uh, relevant government entities across different sectors. Um, we also um, license and help foreign companies to to set up in the kingdom, obtain all required approvals, uh, um, going through the whole registration uh, process. Uh, we have five business centers across the kingdom, um, main one in Riyadh and, and Misa. Um, so, in, in, in simple terms, we, we try to enable investments uh, by supporting uh, investors, whether local or international, to be able to uh, make and implement a successful investment in the kingdom. And usually when we use the term investor, we use it broadly, inclusively. It's from, um, from a, a developer entrepreneur to a multinational company. So, they're all investors. And I came to the center when I visited you last in Riyadh, and, and it was amazing to see that it, it's kind of evolved more from just being an office space to now you have that floor in the basement where you have the ancillary, ancillary services that can help support the, the entities uh, in, in kind of a front to back process um, along the way. Before we jump into kind of the details, what are some of the things that you have been doing in the current environment and how have things changed as a result of COVID-19, uh, the restriction on travel? Um, what, what's the kind of efforts that have been done to try and support in this environment? So. As many government entities, we've we've moved we've moved to remote uh, working. Um, so um, 
one of the things that MISA and the, the main initiative that we took was establishing um, the, the MISA COVID-19 response center. So this was established at the, at the first beginning um, and the whole idea was that we predicted that their investors will be facing a lot of issues during this, um, this crisis. We wanted to be ready. We, we, we had, we had um, uh, a squad team uh, set up and established and we had a process of how to communicate with other government entities who so were connected to more than 70 government entities uh, through, through that uh, response center. Uh, there are th things that we can solve as, as MISA uh, related to either um, government renewal and licenses, licenses registrations, um, uh, visas, etc. And there are things that we, with our partners and other government entities that we reach out to and, 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 and we try to work together in solving them, we've during through that um response center i think till last last week um we've made more than uh it was more than 12 or thirteen thousand uh calls with with different 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 investors on different different issues and aspects um we we also launched a whatsapp number we've received more interacted more than four thousand 4,000 kind of uh, uh, investors as well. And, and we, we, we've been, we've been tra trying to take that proactive kind of approach during this, this crisis. Yeah, and I mean, again, I, I, I'm complimenting you, not for the sake of complimenting you, but it was truly fascinating. I mean, we were at the 500 Startups Retreat in, in, in Jordan uh, back in February, and you came with a particular mandate. You were like, I'm bringing my team. Um, I think we were about 120 startups, and it was very clear and articulate to anybody. If you want to set up in Saudi Arabia and require a Sagia license, we are here this weekend with the team, and you also mentioned that there was a team in the Riyadh over a weekend, might I add, that we're ready to help with any of the due diligence exercise to be able to set you up and be able to operate in Saudi Arabia. So I, that, is, that is as proactive as you can get to supporting startups make that move. Can you remember offhand how many startups were able to license over a two day period? So I, I think it was around 40, 40, 40 startups which I think is amazing. Just to make things practical, because obviously there's gonna be different type of people on the webinar right now. What does it mean for a startup or a company to be Saudi registered or to get a CR code through MISA? What effectively does that mean and what does that unlock for us and why is it important? Okay, so, so what, let, let, me, let, me, let me start from, that Saudi is, is the largest market in the region. It's a G20 uh, country. There's limitless opportunities in Saudi, okay? So to be able to play the game and, and, and try to see some of these opportunities in, in the kingdom, you would need to have uh, a proper uh, setup and presence in Saudi. Um, and this, some businesses would want to do it remotely, which is totally fine. And they do it around the world everywhere. But because we believe that Saudi has a different, it's a different um, structure, a different, a, different, a different way of doing business because of the Vision 2030, we have these many initiatives, huge projects. So it's like a very unique market. Uh, that's how we see it. And to be able to really seize the, the most of all, uh, out of all of these opportunities, you would need to have a team on the ground, you would need to build your network, you would need to explore and discover all of these opportunities and we support on that. So having, a, 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 a let's say, a, a, a presence and, and a team on the, the ground to be able to uh, not only um, seize these opportunities, but also identify new opportunities to be able to develop new solutions. And we've seen startups are one of the best in, in doing such a thing and in trying to adopt with market needs. And, and there's a lot of needs within, within the, the Vision 2030 that um, uh, we believe that entrepreneurs and innovators could, could come up with the right solutions and services and products to be able to solve them. So just for the people that are on the call, what 
let, let's say, what type of companies, what kind of industries have you seen take advantage of the ability to come and set up currently from a, let's talk from a venture space. So obviously Magnet's audience is not necessarily the SME offline business, but more the venture space. What type of industries have you seen come and set up uh, to benefit from these licenses? So it's, it's across, across all sectors. So we've, we've had fintech companies, e-commerce companies, um, healthcare, um, any tech startup uh, company, we've, we've had the whole range um, from, from fintech to, to edtech to uh, healthcare, it's all of them. And, so there's and, no restriction? There, there, there isn't, there isn't. And, and actually, one of the things is that um, I think that the good thing is, is it, it's, it's such a huge market. People who, who, who understand the Saudi market understands that, that you have the, the largest healthcare system, you have the largest number of uh, education institutes, you have the largest capital market, etc. So opportunities, as I mentioned, is, is limitless. And, and we've seen, especially when it comes to, there, there's a lot of companies looking into, f so fintech, e-commerce, delivery and transportation, um, these kind of the, the, the main kind of sectors with, that we've seen a lot of traction at. And so if we just go back again, sorry to repeat, but the, the practicalities. So I come and register because we've had this conversation. I want to come and register. What does MISA allow me to get? Effectively a license that issues you a CR number. What, what is that CR number? So, so what, what happens is that you would, you would need to obtain, this is for, for foreign entre entrepreneurs or foreign investors, by the way, you would need to obtain um, a MISA license. This MISA license will allow you to operate as any other Saudi um, uh, entrepreneur. So you could register to, at the Ministry of, of Commerce, obtain a commercial registration, which allows you to open a bank account, which allows you to obtain a visa as, as an investor, uh, which allows you to be able to uh, sign contracts, do business, recruit, etc. Um, so, so it's, it's usually an LLC kind of structure uh, company. And so effectively, it's the key to unlocking the kingdom. It's the first step to then being able to operate in the kingdom with all of the things that we've mentioned, setting up bank accounts, hiring. A, a question I always ask you, for instance, can you accept payments internationally without the CR? Yes, it's possible but the CR and the license then allows you to be able to do that locally, which makes it a lot easier from a business perspective to issue invoices and to receive funds in the kingdom. Of course, it's, when you have, when you have a, 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 a proper presence in Saudi and a bank account, and it's going to be easy doing business. It's going to, e it's going to be more easy doing these type of transaction, transactions, closing deals, um, navigating, etc. So, So definitely it's easier than doing it uh, remotely. Part of the vision, Philip, is that we are looking for value more than anything. So it's not just about delivering the service of product, it's about localizing, creating jobs, all of that. And, and entrepreneurs have been doing an amazing, um, amazing thing in that space. And um, the title of this session was Do It Remotely Now. And I think that's why I really appreciated you coming on board. While you can't come to the kingdom right now, you can't travel, we have no particular visibility on that. Why are you encouraging startups like myself to use this down period to go through the process? So I think based on what we're seeing, um, when, when you see funds setting up now, uh, so we have a couple of funds that at the minute they are setting up in, in, in Saudi or want to um, set up in Saudi to be able to invest in Saudi in the region. Um, based on the, there's a lot of deals that are not announced. So you hear some of the fundraising that happens. There are other fundraisings that are that have happened or or rounds of investment. Um, there's a lot of deals that have been happening with fintech companies, with with banks and with with different government entities, healthcare. So based on what we see, that there is huge potential. That's one thing, and we think especially now. Things are, yeah, I mean, inshallah, are getting better. Um, now the curfew is, is uh, some of the restrictions have been, have been lifted in, in Saudi. Malls now are open. Retail shops are open. Um, um, uh, for most uh, commercial activities. So we think 
that believing based on also the strength of the market, based on the demand, the, the purchasing power, et cetera, that th there we're, there's going to be a, a pickup on, 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 on uh, after, after the curfew, after the curfew when, it, when it stops and, and hopefully we, we get more control over the next, inshallah, month or two, uh, hoping so, that things will start going back to normal. That's one thing. It might take a longer time to get everything back to normal, but we believe that usually because startups are tech-based, they provide technology. Um, this situation has showed not just um, people, but even the, the government, the public and the private, that technology matters, that technology is the solutions. Our heroes were those startups that were able to either deliver um, food or healthcare or education during this, this crisis. Therefore, I think it's, it's, it's also an addition based on that we want to digitize the kingdom, digitize 13 cities. We want to um, digitize education, healthcare, etc. This is the time. This I think this is this is going to be a peak within. Person, I believe this is going to be a peak within within the vision 2030 when it comes to to to, to startups and technology. Um, I, I I'm usually ac accused that I'm very optimistic, and that is true. Um, it's good to be optimistic. Uh, but 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 I believe based on the numbers of startups that we we see are very interested the the, the 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 funding the funds that are setting up the market we think it's it's that and that's a good thing that Saudi is a very strong staple market startups that are on the ground right now and seeing how the government has dealt with them I think they've they've got the impression that we are with you uh, uh, during these these kind of thin situations and, and crises and I think it's 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 going to be We've got, it's gonna, the market is going to recover. I think everybody should take the opportunity. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you're met, I, for me, it's, it's clear. And I, I, I will make a commitment that I, I've been speaking with a company, uh, with Magnet, and, and we will use this time. I think the message is loud and clear. It's going to be busy after. So use the period now to go through the paperwork, get set up, do everything. You are committed to being fully operational. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions of people asking how to get in touch. We will share the email address and, and maybe if you can share the WhatsApp number I wasn't aware of. But now is the time where it's slightly quieter, shall we say, as us operationally as startups to get your books in order and actually get the license done so that if you are keen to go and operate and move and, and go post summer if flights and um, activity is able to pick up, you already have everything in order rather than wait for there where you may get a backlog and a huge demand for these licenses. Now is the time for you to potentially uh, do that work. Um, I guess just to flip it before we go to a couple of questions, a lot of questions are coming through. Um, you don't just focus on startups. You also look at the investor landscape. When you're targeting or speaking to investors or LPs, by the way, and I'm seeing a couple of questions about LPs. Number one, what is it that they get by registering? Is it the same as a startup or is it an investor license? And secondly, what kind of incentives do you have for the investor community to come and register and set up in Saudi Arabia? So for for VCs, there's two different ways to, to be able, or let me say there's three, three ways to be able to, to do business in Saudi, okay? Uh, one way is that you would work remotely and you would invest, and this has been happening for years. Um, the second is to set up your own fund in Saudi, um, and this would allow you to be able to um, obtain or uh, work with some of uh, the matching, the, 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 the fund of funds of, of the government, whether SVC or yeah. and, and, and uh, match funding uh, uh, your fund uh, and setting up, setting up in Saudi. So that's, that's taking support from the government funds. Um, so you would need to set up uh, a proper uh, structured VC uh, in, in, in Saudi. The third is, is actually just opening an office and, and, trying to invest in, in whether Saudi companies or regional companies in, in, in the, that are scaling or setting up in the kingdom and also bringing some of your portfolio companies. And, and, and based on that, what MISA has done is that we have an initiative called Venture where we have more than, it's more than 50, I think, VCs right now. Um, so local, regional, international, where we have this partnership agreement 
that we would support them and support their portfolio companies to be able to access the Saudi market. So yeah. two years ago or, or, or two years and a half, if you were a startup, you weren't able to set up in Saudi. Today, if you are funded by whether a VC, an accelerator, or an angel group that one of the partners that we, we have at, at Visa, you can obtain the entrepreneurship license for $500. You can get it in less than three hours. You can set up your full company with visa, work permit, CR, etc. It would cost you around, I think, $4,000 or $4,500, something like that. Um, so for VCs, you, 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 will be, you, you will be opening the doors for your portfolio companies and also investors. And, and setting up through this agreement, um, it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you go through a different process where you could set up your office uh, in Saudi or even at work in a co-working space. We, we don't mind that. We just want some kind of presence for this um, VC in the kingdom. Um, it would also cost you for the whole registration around 5,000 riyal, which is 4,000 something. I just want to make sure that's clear to anyone who is a VC because... Um, and a lot of people are asking if you can step-by-step -step process. I'm not going to ask you for that now. We'll see if we can share something. But just to make clear for people, do you need to have a VC recommend you to be able to get the MISA license? Must, is that, what's the first step of that process for them? And why are you suggesting VCs do register to then approve their portfolio companies? That Just a, from an operational perspective, why is that nuance very important? So the, the thing is that um, when, we, when we thought about opening this for entrepreneurs, you want to give the, the opportunity to the entrepreneurs that um, really deserve it in, in some sense, right? Um, entrepreneurs that really have, have proven that they have a market, a product, a raised initial investment, they need to scale, they need to um, uh, raise more funds. So that was the idea. So we're, we're purely focused on startups. So we're looking at startups that either joined an accelerator or um, a VC has invested in them, whether it's seed or pre-seed or, or A or wh wh whatever round. Um, and the whole idea is to help them to, to scale. So you, you, for any entrepreneur, you should have um, some starting point. So you have to, you have to either start it through an accelerator or a VC. Okay. And the idea is, I, as I mentioned, we want to support them to able to grow. Um, our ultimate goal, uh, Philip, is that we want companies, whether you're coming from Egypt or from Jordan or from Dubai, we want you to scale into Saudi. We want you to grow. We believe in the connected ecosystem between um, the Arabic region. Uh, we 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 look forward to having more. Kareem type stories happening in the region. And we believe that we have a role to play. If, if we don't open the doors, if, if we don't support these entrepreneurs to be able to set up and scale and, and enter Saudi, then go to Egypt, then from Jordan, then to, to different countries, you, they won't be able to reach that, um, that stage that they would have enough base of users and raise that enough capital yeah. to reach a great or uh, sufficient kind of valuation for, for their company. Awesome. I mean, I, I think that we, we've had this discussion many a time and I, I've, I've seen Dr. Mazin literally between Egypt and Jordan and Dubai. And, and, and one of the things that we've always said is if you want to get, scalability is the key to success of many venture back startups. Ultimately, you need to be able to operate in multiple jurisdictions, both from companies that are in the UAE, Egypt, Jordan, entering Saudi, which I think you've very clearly articulated and seen that there are many ways now more than ever before for companies to be able to operate, but it also goes vice versa. The ability of Saudi's companies to enter markets across the region. Are you seeing those conversation come to fruition? Are, you, are, are, are we beginning to see more of an understanding of a slightly more common market for, for venture backed startups to be able to operate or at least conversations happening across your peers in the UAE, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, to be able to unlock these markets? We, 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 we've started such, such um, um, let's say, discussions in general. Um, we believe that uh, we've got amazing partners uh, across the Arabic region. Um, and and, and as, as we are supportive to, to different entrepreneurs in different, different uh, countries in the region, we, we, 
we we're uh, we're receiving the same kind of kind of support, uh, inshallah. So we are looking into supporting Saudi, not even but only Saudi, even even for the other companies or startups in, in, in Saudi to be able to scale as well. Um, um, uh, but we are looking now to to starting with with Saudi startups uh, to expand in other markets in the region, whether the JCC or in in, uh, in, in Egypt or Jordan or, or other countries. But we are taking that that in, 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 uh, initiative to supporting them because if for us at the end we were as I mentioned we, we, we attract investment to be able to attract cross-border venture capital from from foreign VCs to to come and um, uh, pour that in, into or to, or to inject it into the region you have to help your startups to be able to scale enough to to, to be able to raise that amount of money just out of interest, what come end of year do you consider to be a, a great success for uh, Misa and the Saudi venture space? Is it is it startups entering? Is it a, a funding? Is it, is there a metric that you're basically working towards trying to help achieve? So, so to be honest, we one of the ways if 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 you want to take it from from an institutional kind of uh, point of view is is uh, how many how many startups can we can we enable? How many startups can raise funds? How many startups can set up? Um, but personally, I think whether for Misa or for the ecosystem, I want to talk about. I want to talk more about the ecosystem. I think it's it's that it's that point when we reach that it's not just one unicorn that that we, we, is 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 uh, is. Is popping up and, and, and heading heading in the sky, but more th others to follow as well. So it's not. I, th I think that's the most. I mean, that's the ultimate success that we're looking for. Flying unicorns from 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 the region. Um, and and I've I've been I've received this a question actually, Philip, before is that what is the largest opportunity in the kingdom? And I'm and I'm always tell them the largest opportunity for any startup in Saudi, really even the region, is becoming a new unicorn. We only had yeah. one. Yeah. There's 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 huge opportunities. There's there's huge the governments have been very supportive. Capital is, is available, the market is 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 growing, um, whether it's Saudi, the GCC or the Arabic region. There is an, an I don't think there is a best or better time to to think about um, dreaming that big. So so one thing is that I would definitely encourage all startups to to dream big, to to uh, I I believe personally Entering Saudi, it's not about the license. The license is the easiest of your words. It's just you it. Okay, it's about how fast you can scale. That's it. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. So I'm going to jump into questions in a second, and uh, uh, there's quite a few that have come through. So we'll try and get them through to you. Any that are too practical, I will try and capture. We'll save all of these and then send them to the team, if you don't mind, Dr. Mazen. And, and then if we can share them on the blog, we'll do that afterwards to get specific answers to some of these questions. Just to mention that thank you for all registering and, and joining the webinar. We're giving a discount code to the 2019 venture report that we've done for Saudi Arabia. I'll be sharing that after this in an email. And there's several questions asking, is this being recorded? Yes, we'll also share the link to that as well. Um, very simple question to start off with. Can a foreigner set up and own a company and have a CR in Saudi Arabia? Yes. Uh, I don't know if he's in, in, in general, but, but anyway, in, in general, yes, uh, f foreign entrepreneurs in general or, or even, even other, other investors can, can obtain 100% uh, ownership of their business in Saudi. And, and there's a question here which I think is right. Basically, you're able to register a company without having the need for a local partner. Yes, so it's 100% ownership uh, of the business with no minimum capital. I was just, the next question was, any paid up capital is required. So no minimum capital. In, in, no, in general, it's, it's, there isn't any minimum capital now. Just the one thing that you mentioned earlier, you were saying if you come via a VC accelerator, co-working space, etc., you can go through the process. If you do not go through those channels, are you still able to apply? Is it just a longer process and due diligence or do you not accept startups that don't come from one of those avenues? So let, let, let me explain this, um, Philip. So if, if, if you're a company, um, you ha you've been operating at least for one year, at least for one year, and you have your financials audited, etc. You can apply for 
the normal tra traditional kind of uh, MISA, MISA license. It's called a service license. Um, and you can apply for that. The fees, uh, of course, are different. Um, it's, it's around $15,000 a year uh, for, for that license. Um, so when you compare 15,000 with 500, there's a huge reduce in, in, in costs. Of course, when you say 15,000, it's, it's mostly in the, in the region, that's, that's um, the, the, the usual price. But um, so the, the, yes, you can, but if you go through, as I mentioned, and mainly the, 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 there are three or four VCs, um, accelerators such as 500 uh, Startup Accelerator, uh, Cows Taqadim uh, Accelerator and others, and also so they're, Sa they're Saudi based accelerator programs, they're not international accelerators. Yes, yes it has to be a, co a cohort with, within Saudi um, uh, that, it, that is running and, and uh, we, we, they would be one of our partners uh, yeah. usually. Um, and also angel groups. So we have two angel groups that we've signed with, which is Oqal Angel Group, the, um, the well-known angel group in Saudi, and also Dubai Angel Groups in, in, in Dubai. Who are also setting up a branch, I believe, in Saudi as well. Yes, and, and there's also through universities, and that's a different um, uh, route, but there, there is also through universities, uh, just cows, MBSC, and, and others as well. And, Mohammed asks a two-part question, but I think they're important. How does licensing help me in approaching investors? And the second part of it, which is an operational one, the 500, let's say, license, is that a one-time payment, annual payment, or monthly for startups to commit to? So, uh, I, 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 uh, for, the first, for the first question, um, let, me, let me answer the, the second question. The 500 is, is a, on a yearly basis, okay? So um, it's, it's, it's a maximum of five years. After five years, your company should have developed and reached that, uh, that point that, that roof, it's grown enough to be able to um, convert into the traditional uh, license. Um, for investors, no investor in the region uh, or even internationally will invest in you that you're doing business in Saudi without, without having presence. And we've seen this a lot. Because if I'm an investor and I wanna inject money and you're telling me Saudi is your biggest market and you've got 80% of your customers from there and you don't have any presence or base or employees or anything, that's kind of, um, that's kind of something that would be a concern for most investors. Most investors, what we've seen is that they would even before injecting, even if you had, um, uh, and this is by the way, even for Saudi, Saudi entrepreneurs, even if you had, if, if you're raising funds, the investors would ask you to have um, uh, a holding company in Cayman or BVI or any offshore. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and uh, restriction to, to then that, com that holding company would own the Saudi company. They, so they would also, uh, be required to issue uh, a MISA license. Um, and this has been the request. So it's one of the checkbox for any, any VC in the region is that have you, have, have you got a MISA license? Because they want to make sure it, it gives them confidence that you are operating in Saudi and there's no, no issues. So to make it simple for you, Mohammed, if you want to get money from Saudi Arabian investors who want to see a commitment to joining into the kingdom, you need your MISA license. So uh, a strong recommendation to be able to get that license. Uh, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you look at the, the SVC uh, matching, which is a co-matching program, they also require you to have the MISA license or, or at least most of your operations in Saudi Arabia to be able to do that. Yes, I mean, I mean the, 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 there's a big difference Philip, between having your uh, full operation in, in Saudi or having some presence and, and, yeah. and growing your team in Saudi, there's, there's two different things. So there's a lot of startups that have their back office um, in Jordan or, or in, 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 in Dubai or India or wherever, which is, which is totally fine um, because we believe at some point in time we will be able to uh, either to move or localize, especially with the government and all the incentives and the work that's happening and improving um, uh, the business environment and all of these incentives for, for, for investors. But you have to have some kind of, some kind of base and, 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 and localization. And actually this crisis has shown us something. The companies that were or took 
um, that step of localizing some of its operations in Saudi during this crisis, even the e-commerce companies, they were the ones who were able to to, right, to scale yeah. yeah. in exactly. yeah. yeah. So so it's 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 never wrong. It's it's uh, it's never wrong to be to 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 set up in a in a right way. Uh, interesting question here. What opportunities for foreign accelerators are there in Saudi? Are there any schemes to support the launch of new programs in the kingdom? So one of one of the main objectives of the Vision 2030, uh, which which is our roadmap uh, into the future, is to increase the number of, of uh, SMEs in general from 20% contribution uh, in the GDP to 35. So it's a, it's a huge huge number. Um, uh, and accelerators are part of that. So, so being able to, to uh, generate startups uh, that have val- validated their products and, and, and were able to, to uh, uh, have the opportunity to raise investment is, is, is part of that. So I think there's a lot of opportunities, um, even in different cities in Saudi, different sectors. Um, we, uh, there's a lot of government entities that reach out to us, um, different initiatives, different companies, looking at how we can support them and, and finding some of these accelerators to be able to set up um, um, and even in different verticals from entertainment to cyber to, to different stuff. So definitely there is a demand, um, but like any other business, so an accelerator is a business just like a startup and anything else, you need to market yourself, you need to close a deal, you need to um, uh, be in the market, etc. There's a question saying, are there any specific sectors MISA is focusing on in terms of what the market needs nowadays or in the near future in Saudi Arabia? Or are you open to all? I mean, I know you're open to all, but is there a specific sector you are focused on? So in, in, in general, um, uh, looking, for, looking from, from, from the top, we, we look at, uh, there's nine priority sectors, okay? Um, and and uh, most of them are the obvious ones, which are um, uh, energy, ICT, healthcare, entertainment, manufacturing, mining, um, uh, also housing, and and uh, I'm missing one of them, um, chemicals. Okay, um, education is emerging, uh, financial services emerging. Um, these these are the main the main sectors. Okay, and um, there's, a quite, there's a lot of people asking, is there a how-to guide to setting up? Uh, is that something that you'll be able to share with us or is it on a website, i.e. the step process? I don't want to do that right now on the call, but if you, there, there must be information that people can access. Sure, sure. So, so I think, Philip, we'll, we'll share something with you and, and you Excellent. can share it later with, with, with the audience. That'd be great. So for anybody that wants the practical how-to steps, we'll provide, as I mentioned already, the WhatsApp number, the email address, and a how-to guide for, for the specific steps. Um, there's a lot of questions here, which we didn't touch on, which I think is an interesting question. You've set up your license, you've got your bank account. Two questions. One, do you have to have an office and is a co-working space allocated as an office? was three questions. Two, is there a restriction on visas or employees that you can have? And three, how does Saudi, how the Saudization affect a startup that's looking to scale? Is that applicable? And at what point does it need to apply? So um, for, for, for one, you can, you can work from a co-working space, you can have your own office, you can work from any, any place you want. Um, and, and at the end, it, it actually depends on, on the type of activity. Um, so, for example, if, if, you, if you're in uh, uh, food and beverages, of course, you would need to have some kind of uh, physical, physical space. Um, that's that's the, 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 first, the, first, for the first question. The second question was, Philip, could you remind me? So, so is it like Dubai where they say that your office space then allocates a certain number of visas so that the real estate size okay. needs to, or is there a restriction on hiring? And then the th- second, which is linked to, is there a Saudization program? And is there a restriction on hiring is the number of locals or is it only on expats where a, a, a specific restriction may apply? So the hiring kind of question around it. So yes, yes. So so um, for 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 uh, for any investor that obtains a MISA license, 
um, we offer them uh, three visas um, that don't go into the count of, of uh, the, within the Saudi Asian uh, um, uh, scheme. Um, a general manager visa, an executive manager visa, and also a chairman visa. So these are issued from, from MISA. Um, you, you, you can consider them uh, inv investor visas so they don't go within, as I explained, the Saudi Asian scheme. Um, that's, that's one thing. The second thing is that um, there's a clear uh, Saudi Asian matrix um, uh, uh, that depending on which sector, depending on the size, et cetera, you can, you can, you can identify what is the Saudi Asian um, uh, ratio. So just for, for a normal IT, um, I think it's, it's three to one uh, for- uh, Three to uh, one, three Saudi to one foreign. Uh, one, one Saudi for three, for to, to three foreign. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, so, so I think it's, 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 it's kind of that, that, uh, uh, that level. But it, as I explained, if anybody just goes online, Nitaqat, uh, uh, he'll, he'll find, he'll find there's, there's a file that could, you could go into details of well, what's the size of the company that you have, what's the sector, et cetera, and you can, you can find uh, that, that information. Look, I'm just going to ask uh, two, three more questions, but I, again, thank you for your time. I don't want to take up too much more time. I think this has been extremely useful, even for me uh, on a practical level, but I hope it's useful for everybody. I will be sharing a video and we will be sharing a how-to guide because people still keep asking the question. So I will be sure to share whatever information. A um, couple of just quick fire ones. What taxes are applicable to companies that are setting up um, as a foreign entity in, in Saudi? Uh, there's a few people asking around that. So um, there's there's corporate tax, uh, which is uh, twenty percent of of, uh, uh, of net profit. Um, usually for startups, it's not a big issue because you know at the beginning they're not actually um, they're burning more than what what they're they're, they're making. Um, um, uh, but yes, it's it's twenty percent corporate corporate tax. Um, there isn't any income tax uh, in Saudi, by the way. There isn't any income tax. So. Is, there's a zakat as well, or is that 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 is the corporate tax? So oh, yes, that is. So so for Saudi, it's two point five percent. For uh, for foreign, it's it's twenty percent. Okay, fine. Um, final question, and I ask you to be as transparent as possible for anybody on this call. What are some of the challenges that we might face that we should just be aware of and accept patience as you continue to do an awesome job of smoothing the road, but some practical tips for anyone that's now considering this to kind of think about to get their documents in order or, or, or just to be aware of as they undergo this journey? So I, th I think for, for, for companies that, that, um, that are planning to start into Saudi, um, as, as we mentioned, uh, they should start the process now. Uh, it might take some time uh, based on what documents they have ready, if some of them might need attestation from, from, from some governments in their country and it's, it's not open yet. But I think they should, be, they, should, they should start as soon as possible and we will help them and guide them and take them through the whole journey. So we will take them from... from the idea that they want to apply for the license to what are the requirements of the bank account after they receive the CR and they want to open up the bank account and we also introduce them to the bank. Um, that's for companies that want to uh, start now. For companies who are already operating, um, I think it's more about um, patience. It's, 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 it's this, um, uh, whatever you call it, a hurricane that just hit us, it's, it's going to pass the storm. It's, it's going to pass. Um, uh, and and, and I, I think we see a lot of, uh, there's, I mean, there's good progress here in the kingdom. And, and I personally believe that we will overcome it very, very soon. And I think just they need just to be patient and, and keep their feet on the ground and, and, and um, the storm will, 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 will pass. Um, we, we've seen a lot of delays when it comes to logistics and, 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 uh, and delivery and other things, even for, for e-commerce and other companies. But I mean, this is a world-wide uh, kind of crisis. It's it's affecting everybody. Um, it's affecting the whole supply chain. It's affecting the whole economy. It's affecting it's affecting everyone. So I think just if we're patient enough, we'll 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 go through any. We'll able to to uh, uh, 
um, uh, overcome this 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 time and, and uh, have a good uh, start, inshallah, in the future very soon. Inshallah. Dr. Mazin, I would like to thank you again for your very um, honest, transparent uh, advice to all of us as startups. I can be an advocate for the support you've given me. The ecosystem, I mean, while you're a key integral, you're the heart of the ecosystem, there are many others, the Munch'ats, the SVCs, the Jeddahs, etc. collectively as an entrepreneurial unit that are really trying to support and grow the mandate of entrepreneurship and you're do, all doing an excellent job. And what I have to say is that you've all been very receptive, very quick to act, um, especially in the last couple of years. And for any startups looking to go to the kingdom it is more easy now than it ever has been. The opportunities there are huge. I've been there, I think, three times, four times in the last year. And every time I go there, I see that things are changing and moving and, and quickly developing. So uh, I applaud you and I applaud everyone and the efforts that everybody's doing in this space. And there's still a huge amount to do and a huge way to go. And I think that's exciting for everyone because it means that we can all grow together. But again, thank you very much for all of your thank you. advice and support. And uh, I will share all of those documents, as I mentioned. After this, I'll share the, the research report, the, the document that he's mentioned, which will embed onto the website, the webinar, the contact details, and the WhatsApp numbers so that everybody has that. But thank you very Great. much. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you for, for having me and, uh, and Ramadan Kareem. And, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And inshallah, we see you in, in Saudi soon uh, at some point this year. Inshallah, inshallah. And I commit that I'm sending an email uh, after this to try and get our uh, CR and, and license so that we can have that for Magna as well. Great, great, great. Thank you so much. Awesome. We will Thank be you very much, sir. Before you and, and get everything uh, done as soon as possible, inshallah. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.